Hello and welcome back to the Cyber Underground. I'm Dave Stevens, your host. And this is our mission here on the show to dig deep to find out how cybersecurity touches all of us in our everyday lives. Today, once again, I have my exceptional co-host, uh, the tech czar, Gordo. Welcome back. You don't oh. have any nickname this time. We were doing just in case. Just in case. Just the or fill in. Fill in. <laughs> just in time. Or just in time. Right? Just in time. Uh, aloha. And how you doing? Oh, how you doing, yeah, man? It's good to have you back. And today we have a guest star here from Capulani Community College, assistant professor of technology, uh, Hal Cochran, talking about network uh, configuration and uh, and management and some best practices and some basic housekeeping we should do for our home and business networks. How, where'd you come from? How'd you get here? Tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, well, I'm originally from, uh, from Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, I've been here in Hawaii about uh, 11 years. I was in uh, tech support at the University of Rhode Island and wanted to come to Hawaii and was lucky enough to find a similar, uh, similar spot for myself within the University of Hawaii system. So I, I moved out here about 11 years ago Worked at Hawaii CC, uh, I'm sorry, Honolulu CC for <laughs> a few years, and then moved on to Kapiolani CC. I spent the last year at Kauai CC, so I've made the, the circuit. But you really made the CCs. rounds, yeah. And yeah. now I'm coming back to uh, Kapiolani. Oh, uh, and we're glad to have you back. Coming back home. Coming back home. And yeah. uh, you, while you were out there, you also did the Cyber Patriots. Uh, I, was right? a, I was a mentor for the Cyber Patriot team for uh, Kauai High. Uh, high school team. Can, yeah. can you tell our audience a little bit about Cyber Patriots? Because that's a really interesting topic there. Sure. Well, it's it's a uh, kind of like a capture the flag type of uh, cybersecurity uh, a competition uh, event for high school students. So it, it capture the flag is, as opposed to like attack and defend, where where you have different teams attacking each other or defending against uh, hackers. This is is more where they. They, they have some virtual machine systems and the, the students go in and they basically just need to lock down the system. So they need to find uh, the, uh, the insecure configurations and, and, and correct them and, and, and harden the systems. Great practice for kids, especially Great nowadays uh, when we have to set up our own home and business networks. Yeah. And so exactly. will, will like a whole group attack the hill? Is it like King of the Hill? That's right. Is it kind of like King of the Hill? It's more like each one attacks their own system and then they compare all and see, oh, okay. and see who did okay. a better job. All right. Got it. Yeah, so to capture the flag, they'd have to get a file and put their name in it or change the uh, file yeah. name or something like that. Uh, yeah, more, uh, capture the flag you're, you're right, would probably be more like where they have to find uh, some kind of Easter egg uh, somewhere. This, this is more where they're, they're just doing configurations, locking down the, the systems. And uh, the VMs are pretty interesting. They actually, uh, uh, some of them are self-grading. So as they make a change, they can see that they get points. So it's like playing a video oh, game. Wow. So this and is it a, plays a little song. So this is a when, virtual when it shoots right? points. So they, they they hear this little tune. <laughs> it's and they, is it like, yeah, yeah, is it like a points. death march or something? No, no, no. It's like a happy little. Oh, okay. it's it's like a, thing. We just hacked you. Man. <laughs> it's like a super. Uh, it, it's like a Super Mario little little song. You know, it sounds like a Nintendo song. Okay. Uh, and if they do something wrong, they get kind of a sad song. Now this is a virtual environment, so it's a, it's a sandbox. It's, it's in, a enclosed, it can't get out to any other systems to cause no, these, harm. No, these are completely it's isolated virtualized. Uh, systems. So the VM is a virtual machine, and there's a number of these virtual machines in this sandbox that you Yeah, so they'll have, they'll have a Windows virtual machine, they'll have a Linux virtual machine, so that they get you know, their hands-on kind of different operating So how systems. many young adults are participating in these programs? Uh, that's a good question. A I'm not sure across. I have a, a good Let's answer say, for what more the total than 20, is. Uh, less than 40. Students? Yeah. Way more than 20. Throughout, uh, yeah, they, yeah, there's teams all over the, all more, the state. More, oh. more than 20 teams, I would say, throughout, yeah. the, you know, oh, throughout really? the country. Oh, yeah. wow. That's good quite to possible to, it, to have more than 20 for a team. And then that could be one high school. It's a national uh, 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 event, so that they're, they're competing with teams all, all over the country. The team on Kauai was was fairly small. It was only like well, four students. Yeah. But um, so these are all high school high school um, students that are really getting their hands dirty in yeah. this dirty, and I do mean dirty in this world that's mm -hmm. out there. Yeah, and 
competing with each other in a way. Now, this is great. And this think is good about stuff, it. man. When, when, when students are in high school, they're exposed to a vast amount of technology these yeah. days. I mean, you're, you've got smartphones, you've got wireless networks, you've got yeah, a laptop. you got your wrist. I've got, I got, I got a uh, wrist, smart got watch, right? Hair. There's, there's the got Internet of Things. My hearing aids here. I mean, that's <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's Alexa. You can talk to your TV now. And there's, there's all these wireless devices that are hooked up to your network. And uh, it's great for the kids to know what are the possibilities of compromise on, on networks. You know, when you, when you think of this, this, uh, this network you have at home, it's this ubiquitous magical thing you hook up and you have internet connectivity, right. but they need to know what the risks are. So that's what we're here to talk about, setting up, first of all, a home network and then a small business network. So let's talk about setting up our home network and let's define a couple of the objects you usually get when you're, when you're setting up your home network. The first thing that you, you call one of your cable companies, they bring over that first device that translates the signal they're sending to you to what you need to hook up to your mm -hmm. computers. Let's talk about that one first. So that's you know, what, what they call the cable modem. Uh, it's, it's, a, it's usually a router and a server and a modem all kind of built in, in, into one device. So it's actually a pretty multi-purpose device that we call a cable modem. But uh, as you said, it, it converts the, uh, the ISP, you know, the cable company is your ISP, service provider. converts their uh, network to your home network. So your home network is usually, is usually Ethernet, you know, the, the type of cables that we're used to seeing. Uh, but that's probably not what's coming into your house. So you need something to convert between those two dissimilar networks. So that's one of the things that the modem does. In addition, because it's connecting two different networks together, it's acting as, as a router. That's what routers do. They, they sit between two different networks and they pass the data back and forth between the... Because uh, most data is passed as packets from computer to computer. Mm -hmm. and, and the router will take that packet and recognize, because of a routing table on it, where exactly. it has to pass that information, what computer needs that info, right? There's, there's an address in there, right? So, so I've got my little network at home. Mm -hmm. Whatever I got going, and that's all going through the router, and then the router's there, and that gets me outside to the uh, internet service provider, and mm -hmm. and all the routing that goes on out there with the millions and billions of devices. That the routing tables are a little bigger, a little out larger, there. a little yeah. bigger. Yes. Yeah, right. So okay, we're we're actually when we're building a home network, we're building a smaller representation of the internet in general. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah, the internet is. Uh, is, is yeah, is made up of billions of small networks. So we're creating one. You no. become so. one of the parts of the internet. Oh my mm -hmm. gosh! And Dude, that's we're getting the, oh the matrix again. And that's the oh my gosh moment. <laughs> <laughs> when good. you're part of the system, right? Yeah. Yeah. What keeps us safe, though? I mean, we have a cable modem, and does that mean the rest of the world can just look at any computer that's on my network? Uh, no. Uh, the the cable modem will usually do something called network address translation. Mm which means that it, it, it will have, a, there's, there's two different types of IP addresses. Uh, now there's an internet the protocol numbers. address that's internet four protocol groups of three numbers. That's the, right. the number that you assign to your computer to mm -hmm. allow it to talk to, uh, to uh, uh, other computers. Uh, there's two types, IP version 4, IP version, version 6. IP version 4 is probably still the most common in the home, home networks. So it consists of for what we call octets, group of groups of eight bits represented as a decimal number between zero and 255. So, so when we it. see something like CSI and they give an IP address and it starts with a 300, we know that's... No, there's 198. 162.200.80. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> something like that. Something like that. <laughs> so um, we, we translate between, uh, you're saying there's a, the internet sees a public IP address mm -hmm. and behind our modem we have... Private IP Private, address. Okay. Exactly. So the, the, these two groups that are just uh, basically designated to be, you know, by by the powers that control uh, uh, IP addressing, these these numbers will be will, will be private. These these will be public. So the yeah, set aside. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So the private addresses are never allowed to be seen on the public internet. They're only good uh, to be used on internal. Uh, should never networks. be allowed. Should never. Should, should never. never. Should never. <laughs> oh, oh, the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure that's happened a few times. <laughs> Any correctly configured router will will block that from going I out. I gotta throw the on. correctly so word So who am I counting on to correctly configure that router? Uh, it ooh. depends on the situation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe my service provider? Uh, yes. Yeah, I would think do you think they should all know, correctly know enough configure to my routers? I would hope so. I would hope so, but I, I can't. I can't vouch for. for <laughs> yeah, that. that's. Um, 
I know, that's uh, always you, the dilemma. You never know, it's a dilemma, right? They come up with, uh, what are they, automatically configured, some of them, right? Mm -hmm. they, so and you well, don't really know what they're doing. They right? don't know. What's the next device? So if I wanted to um, take control of, say, inside um, of that IP address, inside my home network, I want to take control of the routing and the Wi-Fi network and the addressing and the security, um, I need another device behind the modem. So you would need, if you'd like to... Uh, be able to connect multiple devices through uh, that network connection, and also maybe to have to have a Wi-Fi network uh, inside your house, and you need to have a wireless access point with a router. So again, this is another kind of multi-purpose device. It's it's doing routing because it's connecting again two different networks together, and uh, it's it's providing wireless access. So it, it's a wireless access point. Uh, so you've got a well. router from the provider. Mm -hmm. You have a wireless access point that you may buy, or mm -hmm. even the provider might provide you with. It could. Some, could, could, some yeah. do. And so now you've got two of these devices that have to be configured properly on the network that allows you to get out, get out to the World Wide Web. Well, the cable modems should be correctly configured, configured. by the ISP. We, we, we hope be. that. Yeah, but, right. but you're responsible for configuring the, the internal router that, that, that gives you the Wi-Fi. But what if I get an internal out. router from a provider? Should they be responsible for doing that? That depends that on what your, your service level agreement is, I suppose. So oh, this is a tricky outside. one, right? This is the tricky one, if, yes. they, if they give it to you and you use it exactly as it's configured, they will take responsibility for it. But the moment you say, oh, I, I want to change my Wi-Fi password because my neighbor has it now, they're going to say, well, then you're responsible for this. Or how about not broadcasting your... Um, your your ID. Yeah, so that's SSID. because it was just in the best practices, How's right? That, you know, don't broadcast your SSID. So the, the SSID, if uh, for those of you out there, if you need to know, uh, when you're looking for a Wi-Fi signal from your laptop or, or your, your computer, you get a list, a drop-down list of all the available networks out there. Those names that you're seeing are called SSIDs, and they're being Service. broadcast. Service set identifier. Service set identifier. So those are actually a security hole. I mean, if you really want to set up your network securely, Don't once you've configured that. all your devices and connected to your Wi-Fi, you shut that off. Well, just because you're not broadcasting your service set identifier does not guarantee people won't be able to find your network. Someone who knows what they're doing, who yes. has the right equipment, can still find it. But the kind of casual observer war driving through your neighborhood looking for easy... Uh, low-hanging fruit, you know, uh, just networks to be able to jump on, they're, they're probably not going to. Let's define uh, war driving. Uh, and as war driving. walking as well. Mm -hmm. As when people walk around, a hacker walks around or drives around a neighborhood, looks for these SSID symbols mm -hmm. and the names, and usually there's a little graphic right next to the name mm -hmm. that identifies whether it's locked or, or not. not. I used so to jump on the back of the bus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. When it passes by, you just jump on the back. Oh, there it is. There SSID. It is. I the box. <laughs> so if you don't have that little locking symbol, you don't need a password. Mm -hmm. There's no encryption, no nothing. You just hop onto that network and, and go for broke. So what, what happens in the neighborhood I was from when I was a kid and this first started becoming popular, the war driving, they spray paint a symbol outside your house or on a nearby curb so that other people driving by would see, oh, there's an available network that's not secured. I can use that one. Well, what they do now is on the internet, they have these maps. And yes. you can look at these maps and you can see where all of the, the different open networks uh, are. So they, they, they upload it into a database that's just represented on, on the internet as, as this map. So it's, it's, it's pretty easy to find. Pick it up on the you know, deep web, like we talked about. On, on the last deep week. web. So uh, I guess the danger there would be um, when, when certain people ask me, and this is, question has come up, who cares if someone else is using my bandwidth? I don't use all of it anyway. If, if someone needs, uh, why can't I just do a charitable thing and let them use my network? And my answer is always, what if they do something nefarious? Mm -hmm. If you're responsible. You're responsible. They're using your network connection, your public-facing IP address, is what the world sees. So I, all three of us are on the same Wi-Fi through the same cable modem. We all go out to the internet. The internet sees us all as that one public That's IP my, address. That's my SSID is David Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good for you. Right on. Oh, man. <laughs> but true, your, your, point is, your point is, is the fact that even though someone else has jumped on your network, it's you. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. you, not them. It's you. And if, right. they do, if, if they're downloading illegal movies, your, the ISP is going to shut you off. They're not going to 
you're not going to be able to say, oh, it wasn't me, right. it was somebody. It was your network. And you're so liable. So we're going to shut you off right. because you're responsible. Okay, we're going to have to do a one-minute break to uh, please the powers that be, the benevolent gods. Uh, so we'll be right back. You can be the greatest. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to the Cyber Underground for the second part of our show. Uh, today we've got our exceptional co-host, uh, um, the Andrew. tech star. Yeah, I look not, just like you. Not Andrew. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Gordon. That's I think I need a recall. That's okay, Frank. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then we got our guest, Luis, from... Uh, from <laughs> Luis. <laughs> oh, this Thanks, Don. <laughs> just taking... And that'll be it. <laughs> hey, that's a wrap. Uh, we, we're talking about home networks and configuring them and best practices, war driving. And now let's get into the other things that you can connect to your, your home network and your Wi-Fi uh, that are not your computer. And we're talking about the Internet of Things, uh, everything from my smartwatch to my smartphone to my not-so-smart TV to my really dumb teddy bear. Do you want to mm -hmm. tell us uh, some, what are the things you learned at the PCAT Symposium yesterday? Yeah, at the PCAT uh, IT Symposium, I... I uh... No, that's Pacific Center for Advanced Technology Training sure. for the Hawaii Community Colleges out here in Hawaii. So they had a symposium with a lot of presentations, and one of them was by uh, Jody Ito, our CIO. Jody Ito, yeah, uh, who's the chief security officer for the, uh, the UA system. And she introduced her talk with uh, Internet of Things and some of the, uh, the devices you would never think about that have been recently hacked. Yeah. So one was the teddy bear. There was, there was this, this talking teddy bear that you know, children could talk to and it would respond, and it, and it used this this back-end database that it would, it would, it would access. It would upload to the internet. Yeah. And, yeah. of course, there was almost no security <laughs> on this, so hackers were able to hack these teddy bears, and then they could they could collect the, the voice, they could talk to the kids, or whatever they wanted to do with, with these teddy they bears. They could listen to what was going on. Right, they could capture the recordings. Everything right? going on in the right? room, absolutely. And that's a little, that's a little spooky that's and freaky at the same the time. Now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, for uh, Christmas last year, someone gave us something called a pet cube. Oh, and my I wife said that. that is so neat. Now I can monitor my pets when I'm at work. Yep. And I said that's that's kind of cool. Let's see how this works. So I, I hooked it up and it attached to my Wi-Fi network with no security, <laughs> and it had a microphone, and it had a camera, and for some reason it had public IP. Uh, I had a public. IP. I don't know. I haven't broken this thing down to see how what it was configured like. But <sighs> as soon as that happened, I went, Oh no, we're out of here. We can't do this. Because I could log in from a website without a username and password and see the inside of my house. Yes, there were my pets, mm -hmm. probably tearing apart my couch or doing something, or stealing the Rolates, which, which has happened recently. But no, I, that's no security. I can't have that. But that's the kind of thing that's for sale, like the teddy bear. It was mm -hmm. a username and password, and people could put a 1234 as a password, and then hackers could get in and see your kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a big security that's risk. Huge. And there's, there's a lot of other things. I mean, we, we talked about the Samsung TV. The yes. CIA yeah. can spy on you. But I, I don't imagine now that those tools are released, it's too hard for somebody other than the CIA to be breaking into TVs. Uh, they I don't, don't know. Microphone Let's go in the deep in the dark web and we see what we can find. <laughs> <in that puppy. laughs> well, you don't need to go deep, right? We still have a showdown. That's right. Um, if you go to Showdown, I'm not going to describe Showdown to you. You guys can go out and look out for Showdown. Uh, but you will find that uh, all the default passwords for all the default de devices out there mm -hmm. are, are, are listed out there, and you can, you can find them anytime you want, which is why when you put one of these home networks together, they have this easy setup that you can walk through, one, two, three. But if you don't change the default admin password, Sites like mm -hmm. Shodan are going to tell everybody else what your default password is, mm -hmm. and they can remotely configure your device Current from outside your network, from the internet. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing you got to do is change the default password. That's 
lesson number one. What else can you tell us about IoT? I mean, what other things can we worry about here? Well, uh, Jody talked about some interesting things. One was uh, smart light bulbs. So what about smart light bulbs? So what do they do, first of all? If we plug in a smart light bulb, smart. Is, do, do we ask it questions of like Alexa or? <laughs> oh, great Oracle light bulb. What is the meaning of life? No, it's more like not sober, it, but it will let you know when it's it's about to quit and time to change the light bulb and you know things like that. It can it, it can it can warn you you know when it's getting to the end of its life or when it needs to be changed. Uh, problem is that these light bulbs in your house, they all talk to each other. It's, it's like a peer-to-peer -peer network where they all share information and, and talk to each other. So if, if, if one of these light bulbs is hacked and infected with the malware, it's going to spread it through You're just gonna spread all the, the light spread bulbs the in your house. Yeah. And then, uh, I in guess... In case, back to the manufacturer and keep <laughs> records on all Phone the stuff. Or maybe right. someone know could, where you live. Or maybe right. someone could disable all the light bulbs to leave you in the dark one day if they wanted to. All right, all right. That explains it all. Yeah, I, I had a lot of hopes for these smart light bulbs. I thought, you know, maybe every time I put on, like, Barry White, I get the mood lighting. <laughs> yeah, you know, uh, like you know, you never know. You put on Iron, Iron Butterfly, they all go different Let's, colors on you. Let's see if I can black download, light. Light. Let, let let download the Barry White app right now. <laughs> <laughs> I bet there's one out there. I bet there is. Yeah, right. the, Barry so, White, the Barry White and the Barry White <laughs> mood app. <laughs> the mood app. So, now, if we, if we use the Internet of Things and, and all these things connect to our home network, Network. It's got a different name on a business network. Now, if I set up a business network and I let everyone bring in their devices and connect to my network, what is that called now? That's bring your own device? Oh, uh, yeah, bring your own yeah, device. So it takes yeah. a lot of security policy and implementation to get securely all those devices that aren't owned by the company mm -hmm. onto your network safely. So right? it, can, it, it, it can be a real challenge because you don't know what type of malware, what type of devices people are bringing bringing on and they're connecting to your network. And once they're connected to, to the network, they're able to see everybody else on the network. So if they have malware, it could, it could, spread, it could, it could spread easily from device to, to device. So that's why it's such a challenge to have bring, bring your own device. Did the, did the state ever try this when you were at CIO? I was with the sitting and the, counting. The, I wasn't yes. with the state. I was oh, okay. with the sitting and counting in Honolulu. Okay. Oh, yeah, we had, we, uh, yeah, we, we did massive BYOD um, uh, deployments, but way before that was done, we sat down with uh, specialist organizations in the business that made sure that we put all the right things in place. Because you think about ambulances, HIPAA compliance, right. um, police cars, fire trucks, uh, Coast Guard, uh, lifeguards. <laughs> all, of, all of those were using some kind of mobile device. And mm. so all of that stuff had to be locked down, secured, tracked, you know, knowing someone lost it, all those kinds of things. Did so. the city and county give them the device, or did they bring their own? Uh, we had some that brought their own, but the majority wanted to get something provided by the city. So the police don't bring their own. I mean, there's a lot of reasons why that doesn't happen. I wouldn't want to either. I found my police well, officer. As, a dire as an IT director. It's liability. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mind bringing my own, and I didn't mind having someone go in and to lock it down and do that. Because the comment was, well, if there's ever uh, an investigation, they're going to take your phone. Yeah, but by law, they can only go after the data that's related to that investigation. They can't right. go after my stuff. So if they lock it down, they're doing your favor. And I didn't yeah. want to carry two phones. So yeah. I, just, I did for five years. But well, I think all of us did for a while. I oh. mean, all of us were from the day where we had the pager and the mobile phone yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. whatever calculator. Yeah. 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 All these uh, bat belt. I mean, I have a client just rolled out 150 um, MacBook Airs. Wow. Mobile. All, so I had to make them all mobile and had to use right products to secure them, lock them all down. Because you have to manage them. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. what it is. That's right. It's the and internet of You things. don't have a lot of guys to manage that. You've just got no, a couple of guys. I got no it. guys. Oh, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's self-managing. That's a lot the beauty of automation. Of it. A lot of people think it goes on today. Yeah, that's kind. Of, that's kind of. I rough. have a client to put in hospital beds, all connected to the internet. So really? think of that. So hospital beds mm -hmm. now connected to the internet. Well, heart rate monitors already are. Yeah. Pacemakers. And they, the pacemakers, pacemakers are. Yeah. yeah. This is this is a, a tragedy that we have to hook all these devices up. We're getting convenience, but we're creating this huge threat landscape now. We've got to manage this. So what, what advice do you give the homeowner? I mean, the homeowners are not techy, you know, not in the business. How do you, how do we get them, you know, they go to a, they go to a store, they see it for sale at the mm -hmm. big box warehouse, and they go home and install it all, but they never lock it down. And they press the, the one button configure, the WPS yeah. button. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, and what some some can't be locked down. Some don't have any security built into them at all. And that's the yeah, first like question you should ask as a buyer. Right. Oh, this is the right price. Maybe for a reason. 
<laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> yeah. well, 50 bucks. Great. I love it. Look at all that bandwidth. And you take it home, and it's wide open to the it whole world. It is wide yeah. open. Your cameras are open to the whole world. Yeah. So, but when you, when you do a business network now, um, when you're talking about configuring the best practices, right, let's compare business to a home network. In the home network, you have some options. Um, and one of them is setting the encryption level of the Wi-Fi mm -hmm. signals that are mm -hmm. going back and forth. There's several options there. The first one is WEP. WEP, which really isn't an option at all. Yeah, it's been broken it, for it's a, a non-option. Yeah, yeah it, right. it, it, it was a weak protocol that was that on top of that has been completely broken. So, if you go to YouTube, you can find a hundred different videos saying how to crack web in five minutes or less. It's and like a band aid without the stickiness on it. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> right, so you fall do off. not want to use web. <laughs> okay. The next level <clears throat> is WPA, which is what uh, wireless, wireless protected protection. access. Yeah, that's I believe. It. Yeah. And uh, Green Techies here, we can't do it. It's like, well, there's so many acronyms. <laughs> yeah. 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 So many acronyms. And nobody ever uses the full, you always use the acronym, so you just yeah, get right. used to it. But, uh, and that's certainly better than web. Yeah. But what's out there now on uh, most any router that you, that, that, that you buy now will be WPA2. And that's better than the, of the three, that is absolutely uh, the best. Now, when you pick that, you might have a couple of other options. You usually have uh, options for the encryption protocol. Right. So there's usually an option for TKIP and AES, which is Advanced Encryption Protocol. Standard. Standard. Standard, right. And AES right now is kind of the... By far. The gold standard. Yeah. So if, if given the option, choose AES. So, so I, I guess our consumers should look for elliptical curve in the future. Uh, right. right. How many consumers of this show do you think will know what an elliptical curve is? Well, if it shows up at the drop-down menu and it's at the bottom okay. and it's after AES, probably, oh, yeah, elliptical okay. curve, yeah. But it won't be spelled out. It would be some acronym. They don't, right. they, don't, they don't come pre-configured like this. This is the part that irritates the heck Right, right. right. You have to it do comes all with the, It comes with the lowest level that you could possibly get. And then they expect John Q. Public, who's just not in this business, to go in and know what web. WAP2 is, elliptical protocol, all this stuff, and they're all going, what the heck what is, is that? all that? Yeah, yeah. what is that? Why and then you just give it to me, though? There's way. firewall options, too, yeah. right? You can set, you can <laughs> whitelist your MAC address, and we don't have time to go into what a MAC address is. Is that a MAC? Is that only for MAC? No. We know no. that's not true either. <laughs> so there's all kinds of identifiers on all these different systems. Our phones have an IMEI number, which is unique. We have an IP address, which is unique. We have a MAC address, which is unique. To every single device that's connected to the Internet, mm -hmm. all these unique addresses identify us at a certain place at a certain time and that's our identity that's where we are that's what we're doing that's a little freaky so you want to do these security protocols as best you can so you can reduce that landscape that you're broadcasting to the entire world right any last minute tips for our our consumer out there as much as i hate to say it uh probably the best option is call that friend who works in IT, <laughs> and no, no. Him, buy him a six pack of beer, <laughs> come over and set this up for you. So unless you it's know a 15 year old, secure. don't buy him a pack of beer. No, okay, well, yeah. if it's a 15 year old, buy him a carton of milk. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, <laughs> you can give him some uh, credit on what, Minecraft or something? Yeah. yeah. There you yeah. go, oh, perfect. Right, and just don't let him play on your network. Mm -hmm. that, uh, no. <laughs> Here we go again. <laughs> now, now, if we don't, as a last tip now, if, if we have a, a ton of devices on our, on our Wi-Fi network and we've got these great protocols on the router, but one of those devices cannot use that protocol, do you have to downgrade yeah. all of your other systems? You kind of have to, to go to the them? lowest common denominator, yeah. which is unfortunate. You'd almost be better off to trade in uh, that particular device for one that can support the um, the the uh, most secure protocol. So Better bring everybody up device. than bring everybody down. Right? Absolutely. Yeah, great great tips. Thanks for being on. Uh, Gordon, the tech star. I got it right. Thanks very much. Uh, Louise. Uh, Hal. Hal. Hal Cochran from Capul Hal. Capulani Community Welcome College. Welcome back, man. Welcome Thank you. Back. Thank you. Good to be home. Okay, aloha, everybody. Stay safe.